Welcome to Akhand Vidyashram, the first institute of impeccable wisdom, the walking, talking encyclopedia, Mool Aadhaar, the first endocrine gland. My mission, the impeccable wisdom, knowing which everything is fully known, my greatest discovery, Devyank, the divine design of nature, with which the perfect objects are designed and created. Divyank is the result of 60 years of integrated education. Impeccable wisdom is enlightening and integrated knowledge is empowering. Mool Adhar or Mool Adhara Chakra is the basic root chakra or the foundation chakra. And this has been beautifully described in, by the ancient Indian sages in Sat Chakra Nirupana, which is one of the ancient books on Tantra Vidya. And one of the good descriptions of Chakra Vidya is the Serpent Fire, the book by Avalon. I have taken this particular picture from that particular book because it makes more sense to me compared to all other pictures which I have seen. Now let's understand this particular picture of Mula Adhar Chakra. You can see outside a square with the four corners. And that particular aspect is associated with earth element. We will explain that in due course. In the center, you can see four lotus petals, which also represent earth element. Are four petals, what do they represent? Let's explain that also as we move. The third thing which stands out is Devanagari script, L, Lam which is the phonetic sound of Muladhara Chakra, you can very clearly see. The next you can see a, a strict drawing coming down and then associated with inverted triangle, which represents Tripura, inverted triangle. And that represents about descent of Kundalini or Mahashakti within the physical body. Then you can see right in the middle Shivling and surrounded by Kundalini in three plus coils, three vrik akrit. What do they mean? We will explain in the coming particular slides. Another thing which stands out is a vehicle, an elephant with seven tusks. What does it mean? Will be also explained in the coming slides. Presiding deity of Muladhara Chakra is Bhala Brahma or Child Brahma mean first stage of creation is what is represented in Muladhar mean is closely associated with procreation. How is associated? Also we will discuss as we proceed. The presiding goddess in this particular center called Muladhar is Devi Dakni with one head. Now one head Devi Dakni represents the first chakra not second, third and fourth. You are going to see Devis with two heads, three heads, four heads, five, up to six heads in such chakra Nirupana. So this is the first head, that means is the first foundation chakra. Let's understand that. So from these six, seven, eight points, we stand out in this particular picture, which is a graphic representation of such chakra Nirupana's Mula Adhar in that particular book. Let's see, this was an animate representation in the form of God, goddesses, animal and plants, which was ancient Indian sages were known for to explain fundamental concepts of different aspects of nature. But not many people have been able to understand and appreciate the animate form of goddesses, God, animals, vehicles, our plant kingdom associated things. So, my desire to understand concept one, I am happy that I understand the animate and semi-animate form. I have converted that in semi-animate form also. And also, with the help of voice of silence of my soul, which is omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, I have been able to convert that into inanimate symbolic representations to understand mathematical conclusive design of these chakras, which we can understand and appreciate much better. 
So for that, now let's go to the second one to understand this center in the light of inanimate, inanimate symbolic representation. Now you can see the picture on top. This is guided by my soul to represent the same thing which I have represented in my first book, A Khand and Essence of Universal Consciousness, and also my subsequent books, including A Khand Sutra, and as well as A Khand Vidyashram is concerned, or Divyank is concerned. Now, in this particular picture, you can see the square in the background with the red square, which represents earth element with a four square. Now, to re for review of the concept, symbol for Akash element or space was given circle or sphere. But we know earth is also spherical or circular. But same symbol cannot be represented. So it had to be converted to another symbol which also represents spherical form. And that was described in one of the videos earlier, how a square was take, taken, board, then made a center in the mid, middle, and with the needle, it was made to revolve, and the visual impact it created was spherical. I have already explained. From that, we can understand the closest symbol of earth element, from circle spherical, to a square is very well accepted because it almost covers every aspect and gives you visual input. From that angle, I think it has been a beautiful journey for me to understand the ancient Indian science of symbolism and convert that into inanimate form. So from that point of view. Now, second thing, the white sphere around outer represents Bal Brahma as the Lord of creation. And the one inside represents sleeping Kundalini within the body. Now you can also see inverted triangle, which is a descent of Mahashakti or Kundalini around. And same thing within inside, you can see four squares and out of the four, three have got three semicircular fan-like things with a thing. And they represent Kundalini's three plus coils are 22 by seven coils. I don't think there should be any problems for somebody to except how beautifully it has been represented there. So, Kundalini also represents descent of Kundalini within the body and it is said Kundalini goes to sleep in Muladhara Chakra. If it goes to sleep in Muladhara Chakra only then we can go to sleep. Otherwise, we will wake up. And that is something which I have explained in my last video about sleep, a yoga nidra. For sleepy it goes. When it wakes up, it starts moving up and that could be called spiritual awakening of Kundalini or spiritual revolution as well as ascension of Kundalini to move to the higher level. As a result, from sleep we can go to wakefulness, from wakefulness to you go to higher centers of consciousness. As you move to higher and higher centers of consciousness within the brain, your understanding of different concepts from mind, intellect to intuition improves quite a lot. And which I have already shown how with the ascension of Kundalini, I have been able to understand that there are 10 centers of consciousness, the chakra is not 7, and what they represent, which endocrine gland they represent, which autonomic ganglion they represent, is what I am trying to explain. In this particular set of videos, which is going to be next 10, or 10 centers, this is the first one where I am talking about gland in the pubic region, and earth element is one is also set to the nose as well as smell. So from that point of view, I think it's quite understood that Muladhara Chakra, endocrine glands are the scattered pubic area endocrine glands which produce smell, characteristic smell of an individual. And that with Akhand Yoga or Sattvic food and otherwise, that smell does not remain smell, it becomes fragrance. And most common fragrance from a spiritually enlightened person who is twin to the nature, it will be sandalwood or absolutely no doubt on that part. Other things could be rose or sunflower thing are very pleasing. But sandalwood is the most common fragrance which we smell when we are enlightened. And it is cooling for the pubic area 
as well as sandalwood is also used as a tilak to reduce the temperature or higher centers of consciousness. So from that point of view, also it makes sense. Endocrine gland is the first one, those scattered in pubic region, which produce characteristic phenomes, those hormones, which give you characteristic smell, which is also used as a uh, smell for attraction for many other animals, including particularly dogs. They use it very often, even for procreation purposes. And that way for creation, Brahma, smell, and uh, dogs, I think explain ki what this could mean. And from that angle, I think now same picture into this, we have been able to understand it much better. Now let's go to the next stage to make even our understanding much more clearer. The sympathetic nervous system, I have used this particular picture, and right at the bottom, as you can see, ganglion impart, and that is Muladhara Chakra. And you can see ganglion empire has been shown a, a, gang, a, a, a ganglion which is closely associated with two paravertebral chains. Each vertebral chain has got 22 ganglia. This, the bottom one, put together becomes 45 divided by 25 is exactly the way the Vyank ratio is used to for the creation of sympathetic nervous system is amazing. But at the same time, although two chains, left and right, which go up, form the two sides of the two petals of Muladhara Chakra, for the benefit of people who are not aware of it, both the legs also represent two petals of uh, Muladhara Chakra because all the blood vessels which go to the legs and sympathetic fibers flow along with the blood vessels. Unlike parasympathetic which is within the inside organs, thorax and abdomen, pelvic. But sympathetic system is from top to the bottom. But it travels along the blood vessels. So that way prevertebral are paravertebral as well as the two main vessels through the lower legs and sympathetic system is quite understandable that Muladhara has four petals, two paravertebral going up and two going to two legs down. Now, this particular concept, let's take it to the next stage to understand in a much better way. Now, let's take this particular picture of Muladhar and Sasrar. You can see in the picture up, I've shown a man sitting in the middle, cross legs in Padmasana or Sukhasana, sitting and then centers of consciousness. This is the center picture you can see on top, representation of different parts of the body in sensory as well as motor areas of neocortex. But you can, what you see, body from pelvic region to the entire vertebral column to the head is represent outside. Entire vertebral column with the head and spinal cord is represented on neocortex externally throughout the brain. But the one area associated with lower extremities below the pelvic region is shown inside, not outside. They are not exposed to the external world. They are inside. What does it represent? Why did nature represent? And I think this is what ancient Indians knew very well. When Kundalini is within the lower legs, below Muladhara Chakra, there are seven centers of consciousness below that. And that is also seven lower chakras, lowest most chakras, we can talk about it. And they represent seven layers of Mother Earth. And now, this is what is the most beautiful part of ancient Indian wisdom. How beautifully this described a sensation within 
lower legs represent insight which is patal lok now there are seven layers atal lok batal sutal talatal prasatal mahatal and patal which can be related as you say with lithosphere the outermost layer ethnosphere the upper mantle transition zone the lower mantle the outer zone and outer core are the inner core and this picture from internet shows the same thing in its own way where transition zone is shown more as a mesosphere lithosphere upper mantle ethnosphere mesosphere outer core and inner core red zone is it a coincidence that ancient also talked about seven layers of earth element which are associated with atal to patal which are represented inside not outside and that is also one of the reason we recommend in akhand yoga to sit in padmasana for meditation so that action within that lower extremities those centers are not activated your only centers of higher consciousness are activated and you could be in tune with higher consciousness from <coughs> from that angle i can definitely admire ancient indivism which says sahasrara chakra of a individual human being is actually muladhara chakra of higher heaven on the whole so from this itself you can make out seven layers or seven chakras from atal to patal is in sight then you have seven chakras in human consciousness and then seven chakras on the divine consciousness together you have 22 layers 22 centers 21 centers and to go beyond that is a 22nd center which gives liberation or moksha so i think again deviant the first concept of 22 by 21 can be easily explained in this centers of consciousness below the pelvic region and muladhara into the lower extremities of the seven levels then seven outer chakras are the human body with such chakra nirpana talks about it 7 plus 7 14 then sahasrara of the human consciousness become muladhara for seven upper layers which are connected with seven heavens are seven major planets and in the process you can understand earth has got seven layers antriksha has got seven layers heavens are seven there are 21 levels of solar system within that is the cycle of birth death and rebirth to go beyond to the moksha or liberation you got to go beyond the solar system 20 second step and that is what upanishads are talking about and this is what you can explain in this particular line much better so i'm happy ki i'm able to show below the muladhara chakra are the seven then above the muladhara chakra to sahasra sar the seven levels of consciousness from sahasrara to the sahasra earth uh, divine consciousness seven this is a 22 is beyond the 21 level which i am talking about so that way i think ancient indian wisdom has made me understand endocrine system autonomic system and physical body the whole structure much better and what i have understood what i am experience is i am able to explain with this kind of graphic presentation with a mathematical conclusive answers so that way i feel my life is becoming very useful and blessed now in this picture which you have i've been saying you can see all the 10 centers of consciousness not as seven alone but i did talk about it seven below the muladhara to the lower legs seven and superficially externally there are seven in human body and then seven on earth that means 21 to go beyond to 22 but when you go internalize the consciousness within the physical body from muladhara in pelvic region you have 10 centers of system which are associated with 10 endo major endocrine glands and 10 autonomic system and then you come to the integrated human brain and then activate the three outer layers that you can see in this picture and be in tune with akash kosh from that angle i think uh, i have benefited quite a lot from this experience and i'm sharing it with the evidence which i'm sure by a large one by one would be very very useful for this 
genuine spiritual seekers who want to make optimum use of divine consciousness make use of this consciousness to become perfectly healthy physically emotionally mentally religiously socially and spiritually and i think for all that understanding ancient indian wisdom in the light of modern sciences then learning all the things how we could with the right kind of diet right kind of thought right kind of actions we could be in tune with nature and understand everything and help ourselves and help the human society to lead make the world a better peace from that i think i'm really very pleased to have done this particular work to the best of my thing and i'm sharing it so thank you very much for kind listening and i'm sure one by one we'll be able to cover the complete spectrum of all the 10 endocrine glands or 10 chakras and this was the first which is with pubic region endocrine glands associated with mother earth solid element nose and smell usually enlightened people could have sandal wood smell coming from them is cooling and otherwise i am sure we'll have to experience that to understand how beautiful is tantra vidya how it can help us to be perfectly healthy wealthy wise and happy so with that i think i'll let me come to say thank you very much it has been very joyful to explain my experiences in the light of modern sciences thank you once